Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to talk about Ka and Pka. So we're going to start by recapping what we mean by Ka and introducing this related concept called Pka, or make sense a bit more sense in a moment. We're going to remind ourselves or help us to see how this informs the, us about the relative strength of conjugate acids and bases in an equilibrium, and then introducing um, the, the close relative of pKa, the pKb, seeing how that connects with these conjugate acid-base pairs. So what do we mean by Ka and pKa? Okay, well, so we've introduced this idea of Ka before, and the acid dissociation constant for describing the equilibrium for a weak acid. Um, but so just like pH, so pH is a, as a concept that we've, we've, we've met before, that Ka you know, pH that measure comes from the um, hydrogen ion concentration, Ka can be transformed into a simple integer using the same maths process. We call that the pKa. Okay, so just like pH and H3O plus concentration, where those two things are related, we've got a, a formula to help to convert between the two, two formulas. Okay, so whereas we had pH and H3O plus, Okay, now we've got pKa is equal to minus log to the base 10 of the Ka. And likewise, the Ka is equal to 10 to the power of the negative pKa. Okay, the same formulas that we're familiar with using with H3O plus and OH minus for pH and pOH respectively. Okay, so the maths here is identical. What it means is that now we can take these complicated powers of 10 in an equilibrium expression and we can convert them to a simple integer. Okay, so let me show you what that looks like. Well, if acetic acid has a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, we can then say, well, what is its pKa? Okay, so we can say, right, well, let's, we're going to use this formula to calculate pKa, substitute in our Ka value of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, and we get a pKa of 4.76. Okay, it makes our life a lot easier um, to be able to work with a simple integer like that. And also, we'll see that there's, there's an extra dimension that it adds in a moment. Okay, likewise we can say, all right, well, if the pKa for the first dissociation, the first proton that comes off citric acid is 3.13. Okay, so this is the equation we're talking about, saying that one of those protons coming off, um, forming hydronium, and we get this dihydrogen citrate ion. I think that's what would best to de describe. Okay, so we can, from this value, calculate the Ka. We're going to use this version of the formula. Okay, so we're going to substitute in 3.13 in uh, if the power over here, so we get a Ka of 7.4 times 10 to the minus 4. So you can see we can use these two formulas, these counterpart formulas, to be able to convert between Ka and pKa, depending on what it is we're trying to find. Okay, so we've seen that we can make this, this transformation to convert. We get a simple integer that adds value or, or gives us extra information. Okay, but um, what we can see is that it also, the size of the pKa tells us about the strength of the acid. So we've looked at this column before as far as saying that strong acids have large Ka values, whereas weak acids have small Ka values. Correspondingly, that then a strong acid will have a very small pKa in the same way that a, a strong acid will have a low pH something that is weaker will have a high pH. Just the maths of this is the same, that the, the larger this number is, the smaller its, its p-value is. Okay, so small Ka's call, cause large pKa values when we make these conversions. Okay, so the larger the Ka, the stronger the acid. The smaller the pKa, the stronger the acid. Now, it will be very difficult, or sorry, it, it can be difficult to get these around the right way. It's very important that you practice this to try and get it clear in your mind so that you don't get yourself back to front and inside out, looking at these relationships. But it means that then by just looking at the size of the number or comparing numbers between acids, that gives us the power to compare their strengths uh, mathematically, not just qualitatively. But so one of the, the extra dimensions of this is that we know that weak acids and weak bases, for example, are in con equilibrium with their conjugates. Okay, so we have an acid and its conjugate base. Okay, so we've got a column over here with acid and its conjugate base going on this kind of a spectrum. And what we see is that the stronger the acid is, the weaker its conjugate base is. Okay, so for example, if we take HCl, the strongest acid on this list here, its conjugate base is so weak to, as to be negligible. We barely even count it at all. It is so weak. 
Whereas the, the weaker the acid becomes, that then the stronger its conjugate base gets. Okay, so for example, if we take H2PO4 minus and HPO4 two minus, that that's actually a relatively strong conjugate base compared with a relatively weak acid. Okay, so then that gives us an idea about how these equilibria kind of go and being able to say, oh, well, actually, we can write it one way, but maybe it's more likely to be to actually progress the other way, um, depending on which is stronger or weaker. Okay, um, and so what we've seen is that a stronger acid um, equals a lower pKa value, or we can apply the same logic to a base. The stronger the base is, the lower its pKb. The weaker the acid is, the higher its pKa. And same sort of thing for base. And what we've just said though is that the stronger the acid is, the weaker its conjugate base is. Um, and so then that means that then we're going to see a relationship between the pKa and the pKb for the conjugates in an equilibrium. Okay, so if we look at look at this situation here, so let's say you know we've got a really strong acid, it's got a very, very low, very small pKa. Okay, you know, it's significantly negative. Its conjugate base has a very, very high pKb. Okay, likewise that this one is still a very uh, low pKa, very small pKa, um, and this is a, a still a very high pKb. It's not quite as bad as this, but it's still very, very, very high numbers. But as this number gets larger, as the, that is, as the acids get weaker, going further and further down our list, that the smaller that the pKb values get over here, until we get down to this level where HCO3- minus has 10.25, its conjugate base is 3.75. That's relatively strong as bases go. So we kind of get past a tipping point where actually well, we're getting to the point where the acid is so weak that its conjugate base is actually the thing that is going to be of more importance and have greater impact on the pH of a solution. Okay, so as the pKa of the acid increases, its pKb of its conjugate decreases. We see this inversely proportional relationship. The other thing, though, that you may have noticed, um, if you're eagle-eyed, is that if we add these two numbers together, we get 14. Okay, now we've seen a similar relationship before, where we're looking at pH and pOH equaling 14. Now it's just this, it, this, well it's not a coincidence, it's a mathematical kind of um, a curiosity. There's this thing that happens as a result of the way that the maths is working out here. That, but it, it gives us a relationship we can now work with. Okay, we can say, right, well if I know the pKa of the acid, I can know the pKb of its conjugate base from this relationship. I don't need any other calculations, like, you know, and vice versa. Okay, so we see this relationship just like we saw with pH and pOH. So we introduced this concept of pKa, a maths transformation of the Ka value of an acid dissociation constant, it produces a simple integer that allows us extra information and to work with that number a little bit more um, simply or, you know, in a bit more of a straightforward manner. We've seen how the pKa also helps us to, uh, to describe the relative strength of an acid and comparing it to its conjugate base as well. And seeing that the pKa and the pKb of these conjugates are inversely proportional to each other, but add together to give 14. Um, so that gives us great power in being able to work out from one, we can help to find out more about the other. All right, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.